This video covers the concept of acceleration. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity, or in simpler terms, acceleration is how quickly an object's speed or direction changes. Our equation for average ac acceleration looks very similar to our equation for average velocity, but instead of change in position in the numerator, we have change in velocity. As you can see, the variable that we use to represent acceleration is a lowercase a and has an arrow over it. This means that acceleration is a vector, so direction matters. Let's take a moment to look at the units for acceleration. An easy way to find the units for any variable is to look at the units that are included in the variable's equation. So we know that the unit for velocity is meters per second, and the unit for time is second. So we can put meters per second in the numerator and seconds in the denominator. Uh, so we can further simplify this unit by placing the seconds, p, from the meter per second in the denominator. And we can further simplify this to the form that is most commonly used, which is meters per second squared. Typically, when we think about acceleration, we think that an object accelerates only if it speeds up. But this is not the only case for when an object has an acceleration. An object accelerates if there is any change in velocity. And there are three ways that a velocity can change. It can either increase or speed up. It can decrease or slow down, and it can also change direction. Let's look at our average acceleration equation a little bit more by walking through an example. A car is sitting at a stoplight, and whenever a car is sitting still or an object is sitting still, we know that the velocity is zero meters per second. Once the light turns green, it takes the car 10 seconds to reach a velocity of 20 meters per second. What is the car's acceleration? We know that our acceleration equation is the change in velocity over change in time. And we can expand this equation because we know the delta symbol means final minus initial. We can now start filling in our known variables. The velocity was 20 meters per second. The final velocity was 20 meters per second. And since we started at rest, we know that our initial velocity was zero meters per second. And this acceleration took place over 10 seconds. So we get this equation. Simplifying this equation, we find that the acceleration, or the average acceleration, was 2 meters per second squared. Let's do another problem. Louis Francis, an Olympic sprinter, can start at rest and can run the first 5 meters of a 100 meter dash in 1.3 seconds, with an average acceleration of 3 meters per second squared. What is his final velocity? We know that our acceleration equation looks something like this and it can be expanded to look like this. So let's place in our known variables. We know that the acceleration is three meters per second squared. The initial velocity is zero since you start at rest and the total time is 1.3 seconds. We then want to solve for the final velocity. So we each, we multiply each side by 1.3 and we further simplify this to find that the final velocity is 3.9 meters per second.